Alright guys, so in today's build video we are going to be showing you a step-by-step -step process of how to build our NEMA 17 lead screw actuator. So as you can see, this is a super easy system, but super efficient, strong, and accurate. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on this bad boy guys. Alright guys, so in this step we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our universal gantry plate. So in this step we're going to need two of our 15mm screws, two of our nylon hex nuts, our anti-backlash nut block and our ball driver. Now first we're going to take notice to where we're going to be placing our anti-backlash nut block. Right here in the center two holes we are going to place our screws. So let's go ahead and do that. Rotating this plate to the side we are going to place our anti-backlash nut block on top. Adding our nylon hex nuts and from there we're going to rotate our plate to the side and tighten it down. All right, that's great guys. So now we have our anti-backlash nut block in place. Let's go ahead and put this assembly to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our spacer blocks to our universal gantry plate. So in this step we're gonna need two of our spacer blocks, four of our 15 millimeter screws, our ball driver, and our assembly that we have thus far. So to start off guys, we're going to go ahead and take notice to our hole spacing here. We are going to attach our spacer blocks to these line of holes here. So second to the last on both sides. So let's go ahead and take one of our spacer blocks, put it into place here. These holes here are going to be the holes that we're going to attach our screws to. So let's go ahead and thread in two of our 15 millimeter screws. All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. All right, and we're going to repeat the same process to the bottom section here. All right, perfect. That looks great, guys. We're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now, and let's move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. On this step, we're going to be assembling our wheels to our universal gantry plate. We're going to need four of our M5 40 millimeter screws, four of our extreme wheels, we're going to need two of our 6mm eccentric spacers, four of our 3mm aluminum spacers, four of our nylon hex nuts, four of our precision shims, two of our 6mm aluminum spacers, our spanner wrench, and our ball driver. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and take notice to our hole spacing. As you can see, our holes that are slightly larger here on the bottom are purpose for our eccentrics, and then the top is going to be for our fixed wheels. So let's go ahead and feed these screws through. All right, and let's rotate this plate around. Now that our screws are in place here and fixed, we're gonna go ahead and start our stacking configuration. So starting here on the bottom, which would be our eccentric side, we're gonna start with our eccentric spacers, making sure that the flange side is facing down towards our spacer block, adding a three millimeter aluminum spacer next, followed by our precision shim and followed by our extreme wheel. And lastly, we'll add our nylon hex nut here. Follow the same process for our additional screw here on the bottom. All right, now let's move up to the top section here, starting with our six millimeter aluminum spacer, followed by our three millimeter aluminum spacer, our two precision shims, our extreme wheels, and our nylon hex nut. All right, now let's go ahead and tighten those down, guys. All right, now that we have this assembly done, guys, we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side for now and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys, we are going to be adjusting our centrics on our universal gantry plate to our 20 by 6,500 millimeter rail. So to start off, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get our 20 by 60 rail with our universal gantry plate, a spanner wrench, and we're gonna go ahead and start this process, guys. So by grabbing our assembly that we have thus far, we're gonna go ahead and slide it on to our 20 by 60 rail. The wheels should grab into the tracks here of the rail, and if it's too tight, you might need to adjust the, the eccentrics before you actually put this on the rail, but this actually slid on just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our eccentric side, and as you can see here, we do have movement, in our universal gantry carriage system. 
So we don't want that. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Not too much though. We're just going to tighten it down a little bit so we have a nice snug set of wheels on these tracks. So we're going to go ahead and grab our spanner wrench and let's go ahead and rotate these eccentrics. We're going to rotate them in the same direction at the same intervals. So when you adjust one, you're going to adjust the other the same way. So we put a little torque on there. Let's see how that feels. We still have a lot of play here in the wheels. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make some more adjustments. All right, that is much better. So as you can see, with this wheel here, by putting a little bit of pressure on, you can tell that it's snugging against the track and it's wanting to move as I rotate. That's exactly what we want, guys. So go ahead and check all your wheels to make sure that each one is snug against the track. Still need to adjust this one here. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that a little bit more. All right, that's perfect. That looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and put this assembly to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be attaching our NEMA 17 threaded rod plates to the end of each end of our 20 by 60 rail. So in the step, we're going to need our assembly that we have thus far, six of our self-tapping screws, two of our NEMA 17 threaded rod plates, and our power drill. So to start off here, guys, we're going to take notice to our recessed hole here in our NEMA 17 threaded rod plate. This will be facing inward towards our carriage system. Due to the recessed hole, the bearing will mount in here perfectly. So let's go ahead and make sure that that is facing in this direction. And let's go ahead and get started. These holes here will align with our holes on the end of our 20 by 60 rail. So this is how we will attach our self-tapping screws. So go ahead and grab one of your self-tapping screws. Generally, I'll place it in the middle first. And let's go ahead and mount that into place, guys. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this around and we'll attach the other side. Once again, making sure that the recessed side is facing inward. All right, perfect, guys. So that looks great. We have our threaded rod plates in place here. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward here to the next step, guys. We are going to be attaching our NEMA 17 motor to our threaded rod plate here at the end of our system. And take notice that our system here on our threaded rod plate has a recessed hole, and this is for the purpose of our lead screw and our bearing. So our motor will attach here on the outside. So first we're going to go ahead and attach our flexible coupling here to our motor shaft. As you can see we have a flat shaft here. We are simply going to take the 5 8 bore and attach it onto the shaft, tightening down these screws to keep it in place. And we're going to keep this one loose so our lead screw can attach through here. All right. So next we're going to go ahead and move our system to the side. And we're going to go ahead and mount our motor into place, taking our M3 45 millimeter screws I'm going to thread one through the top here, attach one of my 40 millimeter screws. We're going to go ahead and attach that to the motor here, simply by threading it in place for now, just for an ease of assembly. All right, so we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. All right, and don't tighten it too tight. We want to make sure that we can get the rest of our screws in place. So we're going to go ahead and take one of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, place it in between the plate and the motor and screw that one in as well. Alright, and then our last one. Alright, make sure all those screws are tight guys. Alright, that's perfect. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and leave this here for now and move on to our next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here guys. We are going to be assembling our lead screw into our actuator system that we have thus far. We're gonna need our 500 millimeter lead screw two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our 8mm shims, and two of our open builds bearings, along with our ball driver. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and take our lead screw, running it through the back side of our machine here, we're going to go ahead and add these parts. 
our bearing first, our 8mm shim, followed by our lock collar. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and keep these parts here at the back end of the machine. Running our lead screw through, we're going to thread it through our anti-backlash nut block, rotating the lead screw to the right. Alright, now that we see our lead screw is coming through on this end, we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts. Starting with our lock collar, followed by our 8mm shim, and our open belt bearing. Alright, so we're going to continue to thread this to the other end. Make sure to keep these parts towards this end. Alright, that's great. So now we have our lead screw all the way through our actuator. We're going to go ahead and lock in our bearing. It should fit right into the recessed hole here. You don't want any play in this lead screw, so make sure it's tight against the back end. And then tighten that down with your ball driver. Alright, we're going to do the same thing with the opposite end. Make sure it's nice and tight, guys. Alright. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and tighten down our flexible coupling here to our lead screw. So just go ahead and rotate that around and tighten that down. Alright, that looks awesome guys. So we have our NEMA 17 actuator, lead screw driven, complete. As you can see, this thing is sweet. It's a small system, but strong, accurate. This is awesome guys.